Are you? You want a chance to win a copy of Splatoon 3 or even some Splatoon 3 merch? The kind folks over at Nintendo UK gave me just that to give away to some of you. Stick around to the end of the video to find out the deets. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Now, I've got to admit, I didn't follow Splatoon 3 to a T. I knew it was coming out. I know what a Splatoon is. I've been playing Splatoon for a quarter of my life. What? So when I put that copy of Splatoon 3 into my Switch, it felt like a punch to the face. Multiple punches to the face. And the biggest punch was its style. Splatsville and its population woke me up from the Splatoon hibernation I've been in and helped reinforce just how much personality, creativity, and expression there is in this nautical world. And even though style and personality has been there from the very beginning, these two don't feel the same. Of course, it still feels like Splatoon, but an evolution of Splatoon. But at the same time, how did we get here? Sure, Chaos won the Splatfest, maybe that's the driving force for pushing the style into this direction, but it's not the anchor point. Even if Order won, we might have gotten different results, we would still see the same evolution process for sea culture. I've spent hundreds of hours researching squids. I didn't. Staring at crustaceans. It was more close to 10 minutes. And interviewing the creatures of the sea. Stop lying! To find the source of what makes Splatoon so fresh. And it may have took a while to figure out, but I'm confident that I cracked the code. The anchor points of the characters, no. The world, style and personality of this game is hair. I mean, it would be just for characters, but you know, now we have this whole what's use problem going on. So tag along, and I'll show you why everything in Splatoon's personality and pizzazz all comes from the noggin of marine life. If we jump back to Splatoon 1, you boot up your Wii U in May of 2015 and get shown two options, boy or girl. The Inkling girl gets two big tentacles along with bangs, a hippie hairstyle, while the Inkling boy gets two tentacles tied behind its head, a top knot hairstyle. Some fun signs which you may or may not know is that squids only have two tentacles and eight limbs. And if we're looking at both Inkling designs, it adds up. Each Inkling has its two tentacles with four of its limbs as tufts on the back of its head. And the other four limbs, well, they're their limbs. As I said, it all all starts from hair. And it's not just Inklings. The sea and enemy Annie, the hair. The sea urchin Spike, the hair. The horseshoe crab Sheldon. Okay, that one's a hat, but my point still stands. The dudes on display pushes the personality of this world so far, but this was just the beginning. Squid up just two years later, and we got six new haircuts with Splatoon 2. Three new for Inkling Boy, and three new for Inkling Girl. Inkling Girl's got a new shorter haircut, a double bun tie, and an asymmetrical wave. While the Inkling Boy's got a new poofy slick cut, a clean shaven buzz cut, and the I'll have a cold brew with oat milk. Laptop people. All these new cuts do a great job displaying the different ways these rubbery locks of hair can be messed with. You can shave some off, shave them all off, tie them up in different ways, or even cut them shorter. Wait, actually, how would that work seeing that they still have their suckers? Maybe they dry and shrivel their hair up like clothes do in the dryer? And if they want them long, they stretch them out to make them long again? Um... I don't like thinking about this. And at the tail end of that same year, the 2.0 update added four more hairstyles to the game. Inkling girls got the bangers and pigtails, and the boys got spiky haired and mush cuts. Okay, now these were definitely used cutting techniques. There's no suckers in sight. I really hope my theory about them shriveling up their hair isn't true. And just like Inklings, do you know what else you can customize? Thousands of templates to build your site with Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for you to get the absolute most out of your website and help grow your business to the skies. Need a place to host your video library? Video uploading and monetizing your site is as easy as embedding a YouTube video. Oh wait, you can do that too! Want to see how your site is doing? Use Squarespace's plethora of analytical tools for insights on what's going on with your site and how to grow your business further. And did I mention how simple, easy, and hassle-free it is to take a top-notch website template and customize it to fit your needs with absolutely no coding required? I did? So then what are you waiting for? Look, I made a site in like 15 minutes, and if I can do that, imagine what you can do. Go over to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to show your site to the world, head on over to squarespace.com forward slash getmads to save 10% off your first purchase of your website or domain. Thanks again, Squarespace. Excuse me? What? Since octopi, octopuses, octop- Octopop Since an octopus only has eight limbs opposed to ten like squids, we see that reflected in the design of octolings. However, they compromise their lack of two extra tendrils with big ol' suckers all over their head. Although being shunned from the outside world and culture of Incopolis, octolings seem to have already familiarized themselves with different methods of styling their noggets. They were set with style right out of the- 
test tube. Like the pony hairstyle being tied up, or the shaved punk being shaved. And with Octoling hair being a lot more volumetric than Inklings, hairstyles like afros or curls are easy peasy. Or maybe the afro is the head of an octopus. With Inkopolis being filled with so many different looking Inklings and Octolings, it's day and night comparing Splatoon 2 with Splatoon 1. And speaking of Inkopolis, the style of other species seem to become even more expressive and diverse in Splatoon 2. The sea slug Flo. Her hair canopies over her face, kind of taking the shape of a hat, which is fitting since she sells hats. She even has head accessories like piercings and a flower chain, which really reinforces her Rancho Relaxo personality. The banded sea urchin merch. Seems like he's learnt that he doesn't want to end up like his fellow sea urchin Spike and put a bandana in front of his face to avoid losing visibility. Probably has to be a bit more careful about that stuff seeing that he just has one big central eye. And for horseshoe crab Sheldon. Again, I feel so sorry for the crustaceans and crabs of this world as they're either bald or Sheldon. And now, over five years later with Splatoon 3, style and expression haven't just been pushed further, but picked up and thrown further. First things first, any hairstyle for any body style. Meaning without even counting the new hairstyles, your choices double. And with four new hairstyles for Inklings and four new hairstyles for Octolings, this doubles for Octolings count of hairstyles since the last game with eight hairstyles. And you can double that number again to 16 for the total Inkling haircuts. Numbers large. Starting with the Octolings new cuts, we got Tenter Twists, Octolocks, Fade, and surf curls, all celebrating the unique ways Oculins can style their hair while also nudging the Splatland to vibe of post-apocalyptic insanity. Especially surf curls. If you have this hairstyle, you want to slam some metal on the ground because you think it makes a funny noise. The Inklings new styles are also great additions. Cornrows and Soaked are both styles that lean into the sleekness of what makes Inklings Inklings. On top of that, we got the absolutely hilarious bedhead, presenting the harsh climate of a Splatland as a trendy, cool-looking haircut. I absolutely love this jerky looking hair. And the final hairstyle available right now is the Megala braid. Being the original hippie hairstyle, but taking one of the tentacles and two of the limbs and braiding them together, which is fitting for Splatterville, whilst also respecting the origins of the original hippie haircut. Very cool look. Similarly, we also see evolutions of past games being taken in a new direction with the vendors of Splatterville. The sea anemone, the sea anemone, the sea anemone harmony. Like Annie in Splatoon 1, harmony is a great example of showing the different ways the same species can differentiate from one another. The Nautilus, Gnarly Eddie, like Flo in Splatoon 2, pushing the head and hat even more with his hair, limbs and head all coming out from his big nort. We also get merch again, but this time with his spikes relaxed, as if pushing them back tamed or bruised the cells till they flopped. And maybe that's why his personality is more relaxed and less scrappy. Or maybe I'm just going insane. And of course, the Horseshoe Crab Sheldon. Like in all three games, Sheldon, please give us your successor already. Where's young Sheldon? Sheldon aside, even the crabs got some hairstyle with Mr. Coco and the jellyfish too with Jella La Fleur. Facial hair and chest hair count, right? And how could we forget the newest vendor, the staff? I don't like looking at them for very long. But apart from the players and the vendors, there's still a big set of characters with fantastic diversity in hair design we still haven't talked about. That's right. The Salmonettes. Got those big mohawks, got those small mohawks, got those really, 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 really big mohawks, got those large mohawks, got those tiny mohawks, got those small mohawks, got no mohawks. Music is a huge part of the culture of Splatoon, and by literal description, the idols of each respective game are trendsetters for what's in fashion, what's fresh, and what's for future holds. Splatoon 1 had the Squid Sisters, Callie and Marie. These two just having different looks compared to all the other Inklings showcase that there's something more. Splatoon 2 had Off the Hook, Pearl and Marina, showcasing the collaboration of Octolings and Inklings coming together. And now in Splatoon 3, we have Deep Cut, Shiver, Fry, and Big Man. And the best way to describe Deep Cut's mantra is to just have a good time. That it's time to express yourself, no matter who you are, and start just having fun. Which so far, it's been nothing but with my time with Splatoon 3. There's also a whole line of other musicians with incredible dues, but currently, they simply exist as album art. Except Harmony, she's here now. I know I might have leaned a bit off towards more general design philosophies with the idols there, but still, the creativity at display in just this one aspect of Splatoon is so fascinating, cool, 
and just shows how much attention to detail the devs put into this game and world. It's really inspiring, especially if you're an artist or someone who just loves sea creatures and fish. And if you're someone who's both, who's yet to snag a copy of Splatoon 3 yet, we're hosting an R raffle in my Discord server where all you need to do to enter is draw yourself or an original character in the world of Splatoon. Inkling, Octoling, Jellyfish, whatever you want. And if you already have the game and want a chance to win some Splatoon merch, we also host Splatoon Sundays in Madsville where this week we'll be adding some Octoling teas as a prize for the winners. Huge thank you again to Nintendo UK for giving us Splatoon goodies to give out, and we hope to see you there. Also guys, look how small this PNG of Mr. Coco is, I found. <laughs> okay, bye. Thank you to everyone you see on screen, including Oz145, Bapperty, and Stealthy Bree for supporting me over on Patreon. Truly, I can't thank you guys enough. If you're at all interested in helping support the channel, either check out the Patreon or just share the video around. It really helps out a lot. And uh, yeah, check out these videos on screen before the video ends. Quick, it's gonna end now!